I am Michael Halasa, and I'm an assistant professor at the NYU Neuroscience Institute. In this video, I will share with you the work that we have published in the current issue of Cell. This work is the culmination of my postdoctoral career at Matt Wilson's lab at MIT. When this started, Matt and I were interested in a simple question. How does a brain switch between processing two different kinds of information to support cognitive function? How do we switch between perceiving the outside world and experiencing our inner thoughts? You can imagine that if the switch between the two is disturbed, our mental life will be unhinged. In fact, we think this is exactly what happens in certain brain disorders. Treatment of these disorders will depend on better understanding of the underlying circuit mechanisms that mediate these switches. This is a big motivator for our work. Okay, so where do we start? We know that much of our cognition happens in the cortex, the outermost part of our brain. The cortex is heavily connected to the thalamus, which provides it with information coming from the outside world as well as internally generated activity. Francis Crick was intrigued by the possibility that a structure called the thalamic reticular nucleus, TRN, can regulate the information flow between thalamus and cortex. The TRN is the major source of inhibition to thalamic nuclei. In a famous paper, he wrote, If the thalamus is the gateway to the cortex, the reticular complex might be described as the guardian of the gateway. Testing Crick's hypothesis has been difficult due to technical limitations. The TRN is a deep and thin structure, and interrogating its activity during cognitive function has been challenging. We used independently adjustable multi-electrode arrays to target this structure. We performed all our experiments in freely behaving mice. The mouse offers an optimized genetic toolbox for dissecting intact circuits underlying cognitive function. As mice switched between visual attention and sleep, we interrogated brain circuits shifting from processing external information to internally generated activity. We used retrograde viruses to label TRN neurons based on their connections to thalamic target. We labeled neurons with a light-activated ion channel, channel rhodopsin 2, to identify them online during the recording, a technique called optogenetic tagging. We found that TRN neurons had different functional properties determined by their anatomical connectivity. TRN neurons that projected to visual thalamus exhibited enhanced activity during sleep, while TRN neurons that projected to limbic thalamus, a circuit involved in internal processing, exhibited reduced activity. Visual TRN neurons showed a sharp drop in activity when animals anticipated a visual stimulus, while limbic neurons showed no modulation. These findings suggest that there are multiple guardians of multiple gateways to the cortex. The activity changes in the TRN were intriguing, and we wondered whether they played a causal role in attentional performance. Therefore, we bidirectionally manipulated these subnetworks in the context of attentional behavior. We found that the activation of the visual subnetwork diminished performance while its inhibition improved performance. This was particularly important as it agreed with findings obtained from the native physiology. In addition, it provided us with a novel circuit mechanism that one day may be used for the treatment of several brain disorders. Hi, I'm Matt Wilson. My laboratory has been interested in the study of memory processing. In the present study by Halas and colleagues, the thalamic reticular nucleus was examined and its role in regulating the thalamus and thalamic behavior was studied. Several important insights were made and these insights included segregation of differential TRM neural populations, gating differential populations of thalamic neurons, particularly regulating sensory versus limbic interactions. Now, this gives us important insights into the role the thalamus might play in switching between internally driven memory processing versus externally driven sensory processing. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge my co-authors who contributed to this work, Zhe Chen, Ralph Wimmer, Philip Brunetti, Shengli Zhao, Vasily Zukopoulos, Fan Wang, Emery Brown, and of course, Matt Wilson. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was both informative and enjoyable.